Welcome to Real Chalk, a Shrug Collective production. Mike Bledsoe here, stoked to be launching this network so that we can introduce you to amazing content providers like Ryan Fisher. We'll be posting new shows every weekday, so be on the lookout. As a thank you for listening, Thrive Market has a special offer for you. You get 60 bucks of free organic groceries, plus free shipping, and a 30-day trial. Go to thrivemarket.com slash realchalk. This is how it works. Users will get 20 bucks off their first three orders of $49 or more, plus free shipping. No code is necessary because the discount will be applied at checkout. Many of you will be going to the store this week, so just hit up Thrive Market today. Go to thrivemarket.com slash realchalk to get set up. Enjoy the show. All right, kids, ladies and germs. Yaya here. This is the Real Chalk Podcast coming at you on the Shrug Collective and we're going to be interrupting your regularly scheduled program just a little bit. We actually have all those episodes from PaleoFX still in the pipeline, but we want to throw it back a little bit, bring back one of the episodes from when Ryan and I first started the podcast and before we actually joined the collective. This is by far on our own channel, our most popular episode, and we still get hit up about it up until today. So we figured it'd be only fair to also include you guys, our new listeners, in this episode. Even if you guys already heard this, coming over from an old show, I think it's worth a second listen. There's honestly so much information in here. The original plan we sat down was just to make like a one-on-one, keep it super simple nutrition episode. And it starts out like that, but it very quickly becomes a lot more than that. I don't want to give too much away, but it involves horse needles, And I guess you guys just have to listen to figure out what the fuck that is all about. It also turns into a Mythbuster episode of all the nutrition uh, myths and scams and whatever is out there where people are trying to sell you on 60-day challenges and blah, 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 and this and that. But you guys are going to get all that information coming up in this episode. Also, guys, on top of that, Ryan and I are giving away a brand new ski erg right now if you just sign up for his online programming. So all you guys are going to have to do is head over to CrossFitChalk.com. It's going to be $19 a month and you get to follow our entire programming that Ryan programs for inside the gym and outside the gym. He has thousands of people all over the world, including gym affiliates, following his programming. So we have the CrossFit class And then on top of that, you guys also get a sweat program, which is going to be more of a conditioning-based and just simpler movements, more bodyweight stuff, less complex Olympic lifts. So, And just for signing up, you guys get entered into the raffle. At the end of this month, Ryan is going to pick a winner, and we're going to ship a brand-new ski erg right to your door. So nothing to lose. Go ahead and head over there sign up on that make sure you guys are subscribed to the shrug collective on instagram on itunes on everywhere you can find podcasts sign up for the newsletter at shrugcollective.com so you guys never miss all the fun new content that we try and come out with on a daily basis i'm going to stop talking let you guys jump into the episode but if you do have any questions after or during always feel free to hit us up on instagram I am there at Yaya's View. We got Ryan at Ryan Fish or just simply at CrossFit Chalk. All right, you guys, have fun. All right, Chalk Nation, we're back. Favorite tag team uh, jumping back on the podcast. Uh, We wanted to just give you a rough overview of nutritioning, not jump into any like details or go like really advanced, but just kind of give you the main basics on which you should build your nutritioning. Did I say that right? Yeah. Okay. I think uh, I think a lot of people are looking for, you know, E equals MC squared type of stuff, <laughs> but uh, I think the the general population isn't really going to digest that the way that they need to. <laughs> so there's just like very basic things that I'd like to go over, and I'd like everyone to kind of understand, uh, so that you have a general grasp on nutrition, and you feel like the majority of the questions that are just left blank on Instagram on the, you know million people that you follow yeah maybe you leave a comment on brooke ence's instagram or somebody that you like really admire and you're like hey how many carbs a day do you eat it's like that 
not only is that question never going to get answered, but let's uh, let, let's try to just kind of clarify um, how you should be asking those questions and in like in what scenarios, what environments, and for what type of person. Because I feel like there's like so much information out there right now too that like if you really don't have any idea. Like with the blogs and Instagram and podcasts and yeah. this and that. And, and there's, there's different businesses. Keto and that. Yeah. And there's so much. So I think it would be nice to just kind of have like a rule of thumb mm-hmm. at least to have for someone who doesn't have any idea. Exactly. And everybody's out there trying to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. And they think if they reinvent the wheel in some way or form, um, and especially in their in their own way, uh, then all of a sudden they have this new formula that's worth a million bucks. And that's what everybody's trying to do. Everyone's trying to make money. Yep. But um, I think in the general... Uh, the, the you know just just the general way of going over it in general, um, I think the best way for most people uh, to to think about their nutrition is to probably earn your carbohydrates is probably the number one thing that I think is the easiest to explain to most people without really going into too much detail. Uh, and by earning your carbohydrates, I feel like uh, what you should be doing is eating those carbohydrates at the, at the end of a workout. So the majority of the day, you're eating fat and protein, and then uh, depending on how hard you worked out, and I definitely asterisk that. Uh, some people are not working out that hard. You don't deserve that many carbohydrates. Um, you'll have your carbohydrates right after that workout. I remember during some of the really, really hard workouts I've done in my lifetime, eating 100 to 200 grams of carbs after that workout was you know, totally acceptable. Yeah. But had I done Fran in two minutes, <laughs> and then for me to go eat, a whole pizza is definitely not the way to go. So I think the um, earn your carbohydrate path is very, very easy for most people to understand. Um, I, I think it's, it's really, really confusing when someone asks me something like, okay, so can I have sushi? Like for breakfast or something, you know? Uh-huh. And I'm like, well, sushi has rice in it. So you can't have that carbohydrate. That's, that's, that's carbohydrates. Like... If I when I say like carbohydrates after a workout, like anything that has carbohydrates in it is what you should be having after the workout and not before the workout. So if you just woke up, you didn't earn your carbohydrates. If it's like dinner time, you didn't earn your carbohydrates. It's only after the workout. You're really only trying to eat meat and vegetables primarily. A little bit of nuts here and there. Um, people get carried away on the nuts. They have too much fat, and then they have too much caloric intake, and then they're building excess fat. I think Yaya has a story about some excess fat that he did. He was telling me about. Well, and this just comes back to like the rule of thumb that like because everybody's kind of just like out there, and you hear some stuff here, and this bite tells you about that stuff, and then you see this guy doing this on Instagram. So like, I know we've all done some stupid shit when it comes to like, nutritioning, and like thought we were like super dialed in like hell yeah this is gonna work for me yeah so when i was playing college football i literally almost after every practice i would eat like a whole pack of salami just like the whole thing because i thought it was like seven thousand milligrams of sodium yeah and i was just like oh this is me this is good this is gonna make me strong and i was getting super confused after a few months of why i was not getting super shredded and lean (laughs) shredded (laughs) off of salami off of salami high sodium super high fat I definitely did the uh, the gallon of milk a day thing for a while. Oh, no way. Did you really? I did that for a while. That was uh, in my misinformed days. Yep. I definitely thought that was going to make me just super jacked and it just made me super fat. <laughs> <laughs> We've all done shit like that. I mean, I used to drink like muscle milks all the time after working out. And then you look at it yeah. and it has like 43 grams of sugar in there yeah, or something like that. Yeah, there's a lot like of things that are just crazy out there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, guys, I think that's like a that's a very basic one. If you're looking to get it in shape and you're looking to just make some quick changes in your life and uh, and dial the body fat down and get a little bit performance increase and um, you know you get a little bit more uh, hormonal activation with your testosterone, your growth hormone naturally by having uh, less carbohydrates, especially in the morning. If you can fend off the uh, the insulin spike in the morning for as long as possible, you will definitely increase. There's several studies that show that you will increase your testosterone and your growth hormone levels. Um, now, depending on the athlete, uh, this is where we're going to get a little bit more in depth. You might work a little bit better on a low-fat, high-carbohydrate diet, which we have one person in the room right now that that works better for than myself. So that works for Yaya, but for me, um, I definitely like the high-fat, low-carb way of doing it. Now, it doesn't mean that one is incorrect and one is better than the other. It just means that depending on your body type, 
one might be way, way better for you than the other. Agreed? Absolutely. And I think the biggest thing when it comes to nutritioning is that you have to understand that every single person in the world is just completely different when it comes to that. So any person that's out there that's trying to sell you like a one size fits all kind of nutritioning program, like, hey, if you eat like this, even though they've never met you in their whole entire life, they say, if you eat like this, you're going to get shredded or you're going to get cut or you're going to get big or whatever it is. You can absolutely 100% assume that it's bullshit, that they're just, like we said, trying to make a quick buck. And it might work for some people, but it might not work for you because they don't know you as a person. And there's different body types, there's different this. And this is the perfect example right now. You got fish and meat right here. Fish works best on like a low carb, high fat kind of diet. And I'm the complete opposite. If I don't get my carbs, I feel sluggish. I feel like I can't really get going. Um, so I'd rather go high carb, low fat. But all that just kind of comes from experience and trying new things out. Yeah, so that's definitely definitely the best way to put that and um the best thing for you to do is basically just try both out maybe give each one two three weeks a month would be best but if you're a little bit impatient um i think that you should feel pretty good effects in about two weeks so basically what we're trying to trying to do here is to make you pick one of those so you're either going to pick a high fat low carb diet um or you're going to pick a high carb low fat diet so no bodybuilders are always high carb low fat it tends to make your muscles a little bit more full uh, it looks better when you're on stage if you want to have really, really big muscles. Um, but I do think the high-fat, low-carb makes you look a little bit more dry, a little bit more lean. Um, you won't have as much of the puffy uh, puffy look, but even though you can still get the same body fat um, percentages with each one, I just feel like you have a little bit more of a dry look uh, with the, with the high-fat. But uh, moving on... Um, I'm just going to go through a couple little notes that I wrote down here is uh, a few reasons why maybe you might want to add a couple more things into uh, into your diet prescription. So let's say you want to go the paleo route, which is um, meat and vegetables. Uh, it's going to naturally pretty much be a high fat diet, but depending on how much vegetables and how much fruit you decide to eat, you could still make it work for someone who's going to go a little bit more of a high carb uh, style. So the first thing that would be a benefit for you would be the autoimmunity uh, process of that. So depending on if you have a history of rheumatoid arthritis or lupus or maybe you have, um, what is the gluten intolerance, uh, celiac disease, mm-hmm. something like that, going paleo is going to help you guys out a ton. Um, but there is a few things, even on the paleo scale, you might want to maybe avoid, which is something like eggs. Uh, tomatoes and eggplants, all the nightshade vegetables, uh, which include peppers and hot peppers and some spices such as paprika and chili powder. Those things can cause autoimmune responses. They can cause a lot of inflammation in your body. Um, so if you feel like you're in that in that um, that category, you might want to limit those things for a little bit. Maybe bring them back in and see how you feel. And I think that what you just said is really important too. Um, when you're trying out new things, you kind of got to make sure that everything else in your life stays the same. So it's really easy to track something like your energy levels, your sleep, your how you're feeling in the gym, how you're feeling outside of the gym. Like, do you feel like you're clear at work? Are you always kind of tired? Are you always hungry? Um, the problem is if you're changing 18 things at once, like you're going paleo and you're also cutting out this and you're cutting out those spices and you're doing this and you're drinking more water and you're taking new supplements. Now you might feel better, but you have no idea why. You have no idea which one of those changes was actually the one that worked for you. So just make sure that when you are changing something like this, just do it one by one. Like just cut out dairy, go for two weeks, see how you feel. Then cut out bread, go for two weeks, see how you feel. Then uh, go high carb, but keep everything else in your life as much as you can. I know it's we don't live in a vacuum, so it's impossible. You're going to have more stress from home or work or get less sleep. But try and keep it as much the same as you can so then you can actually track and see, all right, this worked for me, this didn't work for me, instead of just trying to change everything at once and then you have no idea what actually worked. Live in a vacuum. What does that mean? <laughs> like, well, like you're, every day is like the same. And like oh, okay. you sleep eight hours. Groundhog day. And Groundhog, yeah, Groundhog day. day. Groundhog day. <laughs> I was like, vacuum. I'll take it. I mean, I just wanted to maybe get a new uh, new little phrase in my quiver. <clears throat> All right. Uh, the next thing would be the quality of the food that you guys are choosing. So 
Um, when you're going for meat, a lot of people are seeing the packaging nowadays. Um, there's a lot of marketing strategies and packaging. Eggs are a massive one. Um, I think it's hilarious when they put vegetarian fed eggs and they charge more money than regular <laughs> eggs. When regular eggs are veg- there's a those are vegetarian yeah, eggs as well. It's, it's just chi- chicken ate meat. But it's that. I mean they're all eating feed, right? And I mean a lot of the times it's soy based, which is fucked. Uh-huh. Um, and the or it's you know there's something in that feed that is you know not optimal. So basically they have vegetarian eggs. They charge more money. It sounds really good to maybe a vegetarian or 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 somebody who's Health trying man. to be healthy. Yeah. It's really sad. Like you want to be healthy, and you're like, I want to do this. I want to eat organic. I want to eat vegetarian eggs. And before you know it, you're spending all this ridiculous amount of money. You eat the same. And thing. then you're telling everybody how expensive it is to be healthy. It doesn't have to be that way. Um, but back back to the packaging, and back to meat to start. Um, when you're looking at meat packages, there is. <laughs> 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 all right when you're looking at <laughs> packaged meat gr- packaged meat <laughs> that was good all right right on <laughs> has to be a joke at some point back on podcast. track back on track when you're looking at packaged meat um there is grass fed there is a hundred percent grass fed and grass finished um and then there is it doesn't say anything it just says you know meat and then also also there's the tube tube meat So here's where it gets really, really interesting. So regular meat that doesn't say anything on it is actually grass-fed meat. And in the last six months of its life uh, for the cattle, they are on grains. And during those six months, their body creates a lot of inflammation, makes the cow massive, uh, which gets more meat. So, you know, uh, these people can sell more meat. And basically, by the end of that six months, they have to be slaughtered or they will die on their own because they cannot live more than six months on grains. Now, you have the other package that says grass-fed, but it doesn't say grass-finished, or it doesn't say 100% grass-fed, which means grass-finished. So that uh, thing of meat is about three to four dollars more per pound, and it is exactly the same as what I just told you. It is grass-fed, and then it is grain-finished, so that it can get swollen and create more meat. So those are two things of meat that cost astronomically different prices, and they are the exact same thing. Now there's grass-fed and finished, or grass uh, 100% grass-fed, right? So now you're looking at a cow who's never had grains at all, um, and it's a lot more money, and maybe you're asking yourself, why is it more money? Why should I pay for that? The reason you would pay for that now is because because the cow does not have the inflammation, you're not looking at a lot of omega-6 fats in the meat. You're looking at natural, grass-fed, so the grass is actually omega-3s that's going into the cow, you're getting high-quality fats. Now maybe if you're eating these really high-quality meats, maybe you don't have to um, have like a fish oil supplement or balance out your omega-3 to omega-6 ratio, uh, but you're spending more money on the meat. So you can either spend it all up front or you can take a supplement I guess it doesn't really matter too much, but that would be the uh, what you're looking for when it comes to the packaging on meat. Did you know that? I have no idea. Yeah, so I'm interesting sorry. stuff there. Uh, yeah, cattle can't really live more than six months on grains, um, so that's kind of kind of important when you're picking your meat. Next would be the eggs. Uh, what you're looking for on the eggs is pasture raised eggs, cage free. Nowadays, they keep. Uh, The regulations on that, it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So it used to be they had a pretty good amount of area to run around. Oh, okay. And, you know, maybe they had, like, a a general area where they would go and tell jokes and shit to each other. But now (laughs) it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And, like, now they're almost literally confined to, like, a very, very small space where they can barely turn around and see the other. um, Like a New York apartment. Yeah, it's like that. (laughs) (laughs) Oh man, I wanted to make so many other jokes right now, but I'm gonna leave some uh, some populations alone, maybe Mexicans. But um, <laughs> getting back to the, uh, the the chickens there, the reason that you want the pasture raised is because pasture raised the chickens are eating worms in the grass, so they're hanging out on this really really cool setting that you're seeing uh, in your mind right now. You know, the sun's out and there's clouds. And, you know, the farmer gets up in his overalls and he looks over his farm and he's like, fuck yeah. Those are the eggs 
and those are the chickens that are on the pasture raised egg carton um, they're out there eating worms and you're getting high quality fat high quality egg white high quality pretty much everything that has to do with eggs in general going in your body and boom now a pasture raised egg a dozen of those babies is like ten dollars and regular eggs are like a dollar mm-hmm. um here's my take on this so i've read a lot of studies a lot of peer-reviewed journals different things like that geeked out really hard the, the cheaper the egg uh the eggs the chicken is super stressed out uh it's raising cortisol levels in their body and it's transferring to the egg so you're actually eating an egg that could potentially be raising your own body's cortisol levels and also giving you like stress hormone um, and being a negative effect on your body. That's why it's, it's kind of almost a better idea to be buying egg whites in some of these containers. Um, yeah, like the packet stuff? Yeah, that are from a high quality farm <laughs> almost and maybe getting some of these eggs. But and, and I think a lot of places are starting to get away with even pasture raised eggs probably being grain finished. I mean, it's just really, really sketchy out there. But um, if you can get your own chicken, there's a lot of people around here who have chickens, actually. Dude, that's the best way to do it. That girl Nova in our gym has chickens in her backyard and has her own eggs all the time. Uh, or you guys can go to uh, the farmer's markets and buy eggs. Uh, you know, you're going to get really high-quality eggs there. But um, definitely try to stick for the pasture-raised eggs if you can. Get the um, 100% grass finished or 100% grass fed uh, meat if you can if you can't just supplement it with a omega-3 supplement and that's it for the meat quality that I'd like to think I'd like to talk about next so would be to summarize oh, to summarize you don't want to uh, mess with the stressed out chicks yeah stressed out chicks <laughs> there's a lot of stressed chicks out there stay away from the stressed chicks we've got a whole other podcast on that <laughs> I've had some some girlfriends that have stressed me the fuck stressed out stressed out <clears throat> What's wrong with someone? All right, never mind, never mind. Never mind. Um, <laughs> uh, let's move on to quality of carbohydrates. Has anyone ever heard of that term before? Quality of car- carbohydrates? Probably not. Um, what, I, what I mean when I say quality of carbohydrates is the glycemic index of a carbohydrate. Now, the glycemic index is usually a number from 0 to 100. It can go over 100. But basically, this is how fast it gets metabolized in your body and becomes energy or glucose or gets used as an energy source uh, in your body. So you always want to have the lowest number possible so that you are not getting insulin spikes in your body. So you will become fat by having more insulin spikes. You will become lean uh, by having less insulin spikes. So that's why fast food is actually uh, an epidemic is because you know people are having soda and bread with sugar in it and all these really sweet things and it creates an insulin spike and once you have an insulin spike all of these uh, nutrients go into your muscles or into your body and it just you know creates a bigger body so in short I know some of you guys are really smart out there you're like oh he missed so many things I did but I'm trying to keep it basic for you guys Um, let's go ahead and keep the insulin spikes as low as possible so green leafy vegetables are always going to be the lowest uh, number on the zero to hundred, like a broccoli is like a two. Um, and then you have things like dates, you know, people get really concerned with dates, uh, when they become paleo, they're like, paleo is great. I eat dates all the time, dates and bacon, but a date is over a hundred on the glycemic index scale. You are creating a massive insulin spike. Um, and the last thing you want during an insulin spike is to put fat into your body because that will actually make you fat. So if you have an insulin spike, and you put fat in your body, for sure, gonna get fat. Can you explain it a little bit more? Because I know you told me about that a couple weeks or months ago. Like we had exactly that conversation, and mm-hmm. I had no idea. So, so basically, if I was to let's say I draw a circle on a board, you guys are envisioning a whiteboard or a blackboard, and I have a circle. Um, as soon as I create an insulin spike, there's a hole in that circle. Now, that um, that cell is ready to absorb nutrients. And after a workout, your body is dying for nutrients and it's dying for glucose um, and carbohydrates to recover from. And basically, you want a lot of sugar during that point to open that window up and then put as many carbohydrates and protein into that window as possible to not only make it bigger, but to also recover the muscle. And that's where your carbohydrates and your protein come in. Now, if you fill that cell with fat, it... um, 
it doesn't get used like the carbohydrate does and to repair the muscle and then the pro i mean to yeah to recover the muscle and then to build the muscle with the protein the fat doesn't have either one of those uh jobs so it sits there and you become fatter so there's the insulin spike that I'm talking about. Now, if you're a bodybuilder, a lot of these bodybuilders now, they're injecting insulin after a workout to get an even bigger insulin spike. And so they can absorb even more carbohydrates and even more protein, and they're getting massive. So now if you look at like Arnold Schwarzenegger, for instance, and then you look at the bodybuilders who are winning the Arnold Schwarzenegger Classic now, yep. they actually have pictures of him standing next to him. And they're like, oh, look at this physique. And they show, uh, or they superimpose the old Arnold with the new Arnold winner. Yeah. It's just two completely different bodies because you couldn't do that back then uh, without without the insulin uh, stuff that people are doing now. Insulin doping, sorry. Right. That's, that's the word. I've heard stories so that Arnold and his like gang that he had back in the day, um, every time after a workout, they would go next door and they had like a little pie bakery and they would all just like eat a whole pie yeah. after a workout just because like just exactly what you said, spike your insulin and get a bunch of carbs. Well, yeah, like an apple, an apple pie would be great because it's yeah. there's really no fat in that. Yeah. An apple is all sugar and carbs and then the, even the bread is more more carbs. Right. And he uh, he's on enough extra sauce yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where, where it doesn't really it doesn't matter, matter too much. Yep. But um, back to the quality of your carbohydrates, guys. Basically... You can look up, it's pretty public knowledge, the glycemic index online, and you will get a bunch of values for just about anything. I'm looking at one right now, and I'll just go over just some random things for you, but you're looking at a 0 to 100 scale, right? And you want to be as low as possible, with a broccoli being a 2, and a date being a 102. Um, here's some stuff in the middle. So let's, let's just go over a corn tortilla. That's a 70. 0 out of 100, not doing too good. Um, here's a here's a good one for you. This is fun. Wheat bread, seventy. White bread, seventy. Uh, Blow your minds. Yep, there you All go. right. White rice and brown rice is the same too as well, guys. Um, Gatorade is an eighty. Oatmeal is a fifty-eight. Not as badass as you guys thought. Um, and then let's, let's, let me just find something small here. Uh, a peanut is thirteen, so that's pretty low. Um, and then a yam is a 51, a sweet potato is a 54. So people who like to argue about sweet potatoes versus yams, uh, they're pretty similar. And then a potato is a 104, so that's super high. So post-workout, a regular potato is better than a sweet potato. You heard that here. That is real life. That is good news for you guys because regular potatoes are a lot cheaper and they taste a hell of a lot better sometimes, uh, depending on which ones you get. Um, so that is a better option for post-workout. And we'll just go over like one more interesting one here that might blow your mind slightly. Um, hmm. Oh, let's just, let's just say meat in general. All meat is a zero. So it doesn't really convert to uh, any sort of insulin spike. So that's good. That's probably probably enough for now so there's your uh there's your meat selections there's your carb selections um i think another thing that is very very interesting for you guys is the myth of calories um i do not necessarily believe in calories being the end-all be-all in how much weight you're going to lose or gain as much as i think that the quality of what you're eating and the time of when you're eating it um makes as much of a difference. Do you agree on that? Absolutely, especially the timing part. Yeah, I think the timing part is huge. Like you just said, it's so different if someone works out in the morning or if someone works out in the afternoon or someone works out twice a day. Like everything, or you don't work out that day, everything revolves around that. You know what I yeah. mean? So um, yeah, the timing of things are huge. And then the timing, I feel like you should always be eating at the same time, but what you're eating at those times. Did yeah. you just work out? Did you not work out? And then also what you were referring to earlier if you do fran fran is a hard workout but you're only going for two minutes mm -hmm. um or if you fish you probably go like 130 <laughs> no my best one's 157 uh but i would say like average person probably four maybe like four minutes four minutes right a good so pretty good it, it hurts it hurts a lot but it's your if you're looking at your cardiovascular output it's, it's not very big it's just those four minutes so it's more like all right did you just do like a 45 minute MRAP where like your heart it was just at like 80-85% the entire time 
that your body needs a lot more food and especially carbohydrates after a workout like that even though Fran probably hurt a lot more you know so those are like those are the biggest differences I think so I wouldn't get too hung up on the calorie numbers guys if you're trying to change uh, something in your diet like kind of what I went over um, I wouldn't be hung up too much on the number Uh, just definitely be hung up on your quality of food and when you're eating it and what exactly that you're eating I do have four things here that I think are pretty funny to go over might not be a knee slapper for you where you're literally laughing out loud and someone's looking at you wondering why you're laughing so much. But um, I have these four reasons that suggest why you might be skinny fat. <laughs> <laughs> and I love skinny fat people. Uh, for all of you out there who are skinny fat, I just I want to come over and give you a good old hug. <laughs> there's a lot. Skinny fat hug. There's a lot of very inappropriate things I'd love to whisper in your ear. Um, and I'm going to start with one right now. So, number one. You probably do too much cardio. Research is fairly clear on this. If you uh, if you are training for hypertrophy as a goal and you're doing aerobic work, this is definitely going to interfere with your goal. Uh, and aerobic exercise is going to cannibalize your muscle mass. So if you're trying to get jacked and you just keep doing cardio after cardio and cardio, you're probably going to create something called skinny fat. <laughs> Number two. You're eating far too little. So if you're eating one one meal a day or maybe two meals a day um, and you're not really getting anywhere, it's because your metabolism is slowed down, uh, you're not really having great food selection, um, and you're probably something called skinny fat. (laughs) You want to add to that one? I feel like you want to eat that. Absolutely. That's my favorite point (laughs) ever Like because people just don't understand that that – um, and this is like kind of turning into like an episode of like Mythbusters, like yeah. food Mythbusters. But uh, I hate when people are trying to like gain gain muscle and lose weight, and they're they're not eating, like they're just like starving themselves. And it just it doesn't make sense. Like it's never going to work because your body is basically just running on like reserve mode and every every kind of food that it gets, it just like it clings onto it and it just doesn't want to get rid of it. Yeah, and um, your your hormone levels are all over the place like you're never going to get to your goal just because you're not eating enough yeah and then you eat less because you feel like you're not mm-hmm. looking the way you want to look and you eat less and people eat less and then they start some outlandish st- stuff like freaking do a uh, ketogenic diet or and they do a fucking cleanse or they do a fucking <laughs> juice cleanse <laughs> where literally all they do for a week is to shove sugar down their throat yeah and think that that's gonna work. But you made somebody a hundred bucks who spent three dollars yeah. on vegetables, so that's good. People, if you're gonna do me one favor, listening to this, eat more food. Seriously, all of you guys. If you're listening to this and you do CrossFit, even if you do CrossFit three times a week for like an hour, and you're not even competitive, seriously, eat more food. I'm serious. Rob Wolf, actually, if you guys know Rob Wolf, he's really, really good uh, with anything paleo and anything nutrition based at all. He's like, he's definitely probably one of the best. Um, nutrition authors of all time he's recently come out saying that people should be eating more and working out less and he like talks about it like in depth and he has his own podcast that uh, there's a bunch of other podcasts that they have him on have him talk about it but um he's basically just saying that a lot of people need to increase their protein intake and that's you know it's definitely a fact um i my favorite analogy that i've ever gotten this was from like a buddy of mine back home who went to school for nutritioning and some other stuff. And uh, he said that, and we can tweak that a little bit. um, He said that fat burns in a fire of carbs. So you need your body running at 100% if you want to burn fat or if you want to gain muscle. Because if you're, so your fat reserves of your body are basically like like energy reserves, right? Your body's like hanging onto it. Exactly what it is, yeah. For times of need, right? It's like from, goes all the way back to Neanderthals when they finally got enough food where their body could store some of it away, then that's what their body would do because there might be coming a time where they're not eating enough, right? So that's where that's where that comes from. So it's, it's an energy reserve. What you want is your body to think or to feel like you're putting enough food into your system on a daily basis that it doesn't need any energy reserves. So it just takes the energy reserves and thinks, okay, we're getting so much food, we can just get rid of this, we can get rid of this excess fat, 
because we don't need it. We're we we're well nu- nutritioned and nourished, and every like we can just get rid of this extra energy. That's never going to happen if you're not eating enough, because then your body feels like there's scarce scarcity scarcity. How do you say it? Scarcity. Scarcity. And he's German, guys. German guy. <laughs> I, I'm taking my foreign mulligan. <laughs> um, yeah, and your body's just going to hang on to it for as long as it possibly can because it feels like it's never going to get the food that it needs to um, function at the level of fitness or the level of anything that you want it to. Agreed. So, eat more. Eat more food, dude. Seriously. All right. If you do feel like restricting your calories for any reason, just eat more protein, please, so that you don't uh, have any muscle wasting effects. All right? Um, number three of why you might be skinny fat, <laughs> you might have guessed it because we were just talked about all these calories, is being afraid of consuming fats, all right? You might be skinny fat if you're too afraid to consume fat. Skinny people share dietary fat phobia as one of their pitfalls. For example, they're the ones that post on Facebook comments like, won't eating nuts make you fat? Now, it can. <laughs> In the right scenario, but in all the scenarios that we talked about, hopefully you do not think that that is you, all right? So if you think eating fat is going to make you fat, it probably will if you eat biscuits and gravy with it, all right? Um, If you're just eating fat and you're not eating a lot of carbohydrates, you're going to be fine. And let's just just say this too, another myth, myth buster point. The fat you're injecting into your body does not automatically get reverted into body fat. It's not the same thing. Yeah. Those are two completely different things. I can eat just sugar and never eat any fat and I'm still going to be fat because your body takes it and turns it into the reserves that we were just talking about. So just because you're eating fat doesn't mean that your body is just going to take it and put it on your body as fat. There's lots of other functions that the fat serves in your body. Yeah. I don't really want to dive too much into this one, but I just want you guys to know that there's been times when, like, the government has literally needed to get rid of a shit ton of cheese and milk and stuff just because, like, there's such an excess of it uh-huh. that they've created society to think that fat was, like, really cool for a long time. And then they took it away. Yeah. And they brought it back. It just kind of depends on, like, what they kind of want to sell at the time. Like, wheat right, right now is really big, so they're not really big on fat, and they're really, really big on carbohydrates. Well, fat's right now, like, <laughs> the whole, like, butter and stuff. Like, everyone's, like, putting butter on everything. Yeah, and, is like, fat getting bigger now? I yeah, might, not, I even, think, I might I think, not even be noticing. I think fat is getting bigger right now. <laughs> fat's getting bigger right now. But, um, anyway, I don't want to dive too much into that, but I just don't want you to have any, like, any stigmas that, like, you know, you've been watching the news or you've been, you know, seeing a lot of things pop up on Instagram or Facebook or in some sort of news uh, type of view that you keep seeing i just don't want that to be like imagery in your head all of a sudden like oh this is bad this is bad this is bad listen to the people that have had the most experience um not just the news and the last thing on my little list here for the top four reasons you might be skinny fat is the absence of strength training so strength training has more benefits of the body composition than the general population thinks Um, Every time that you do strength, you are raising your body's hormone levels, which is increasing muscle mass, is increasing bone mass, uh, bone density, I should say. So as you get older, it becomes more and more important for you guys to do strength training. In my opinion, um, 28 years old is when a lot of people start to drop a lot of their hormone levels. So pre-28, I think those are called uh, the show muscles. Anything pre-28 is like, you just want to go out, you want to look good, so you hook up with all the chicks, or maybe the chicks want to hook up with all the dudes, hopefully not, (laughs) fuck, (laughs) something like that, and then after 28, when your hormone levels drop, now you're looking for the go muscles, you're trying to uh, build something that is a lot harder to build than when you were pre-28, so you're actually, right around that time, it's important to build as much muscle as possible and hang on to it for as long as possible. Now, when you talk to older guys the, that are really, really fit, the first thing they'll tell you is the most important thing is just never stopping and just going strong for as long as you can. Um, that's also a big reason why a lot of guys who get older, they don't want to have like knee replacements or hip replacements or anything like that because it's so devastating to their body at those older ages to be able to come back from stuff like that. Well, and to be on bed rest for like three months, six months, yeah, something really, like that. It, it crushes your muscle mass. Yeah. So, um, also, 
you know, women go through menopause and they lose a lot of bone density and they fall over and they break their hip or they break a leg and they wind up dying from that like later on in life. Um, or maybe, maybe they're 80 and they, that happened and they wind up dying a little bit later on anyway. Um, because they didn't really do any strength training. I've been really, really trying hard to get my mom to do just some light freaking just body weight routine, but she just keeps resisting. Um, eventually all of us are going to have to do some strength training guys better get on the bandwagon now. And here's another fact for you when it comes to strength training. When you do, like, let's say you go for, like, a run in the morning, um, your body is done burning calories literally as soon as you get done with the run. If you do strength training, if you do, like, a <clears throat> an hour strength training session, you're burning calories for 24 hours after that. Which is hilarious for anybody out there who does Orange Theory. You guys are victim of marketing because they say on their trucks and all their windows, 24 hours of fat burning post-workout. That's fucking average. That's yeah. like the average of everything. They just pointed it out. Just uh, I, marketing is good, but it's it's bad too. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. No, that was that was my point basically. Okay. So like when you're when you're running, you're doing cardio. People go running and do cardio because they like they want to lose weight, but they don't want to gain any, any muscle. Right? They're too scared to get bulky because they think they're gonna touch a dumbbell and look like fucking Brookends. Yeah. For the same second, and um, in the same second. In the same second. Yeah. Touch it and immediately they're like fuck. <laughs> <laughs> one pull up god damn it fucking jack so i had a girl one time i swear to god she i was trying to train her she, i i asked her to do pull-ups one time one fucking time and she's like i'm getting married in a couple months if i do pull-ups i'm gonna be fucking jacked <laughs> and i was like listen i just want you to do them today i wish she's like no i will i Later on today, I'll be I'll be bigger. Yeah. And, and I, I I told her I said, "Hey, listen, lady, if you're for real, I think we should do the pull ups, right? And if you're for real, you call me. I'm gonna take some blood sample, and I'm then gonna we be, have something here. And then I'm gonna become like the we're gonna be rich as fuck. Yeah. Like, <laughs> prove me wrong, please. All right. Um, let's talk about supplements. All right. Everybody wants to talk about supplements. They want to know. Who's taking what? Um, how much of this? How much of that? What should I take? Honestly, in my opinion, 100% food is going to be the number one uh, thing that's going to get you to wherever it is that you want to be. 100% guaranteed, no fucking way a supplement is going to help you any better than food will. But I will touch on a few things that have shown some promise in studies. So, branch chain amino acids. That is probably the number one thing I would tell you to dump your money on. Um, it does help your body make a lot more muscle. Um, it does uh, kind of block um, a lot of the muscle wasting effects you get while working out really, really hard for a long period of time. So, like after you, after like a one hour weightlifting window, like you you, kind of, you need to go eat like pretty soon. Like you're starting to get to a muscle wasting time period. Uh, so having some BCAs during that point, you'll see a lot of people in the gym, uh, they have like those colored drinks like while they're working out. Those are usually BCAs. Um, now you can get branched chain amino acids in your meat. It's in there. Uh, it's just, this is just extra that sh has shown in studies that during workout, pre-workout and post-workout, they, they work really, 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 really well. Uh, let me tell you guys this just to save you guys some money too. Your body can only take in so many BCAAs and you're just shitting out the rest. A lot of protein nowadays. So if you have like, the well, not necessarily shitting out. Your body will never waste anything, to be honest. Well, but it'll, you, it'll use it as something else. There's something else. All right, yeah, fair but, enough. But you're correct. Yeah. You are right. Yeah. A lot of the <laughs> big protein powders nowadays. So if you use like the gold standard, blah blah, blah they have the branched chain amino acids already in them, and you don't need any more. So just make sure before you guys go out and buy BCAAs and start adding those to your diet. Look at your protein powder and see if they're already in there or if you might want to switch protein powders to one that already does just to save yourself some money. And on top of that, when you do get your BCAAs, I would probably prefer that you either get one that has non-flavor, uh, it's just straight powder, or you just take the pills because a lot of the, the ones they have out there right now, they have, um, I'm sure you guys are fairly familiar with different types of sugar out there, but a lot of them have sugarose in it uh, to make them taste really sweet and you're getting that insulin spike again, so it's not really necessary. Um, a good source of fat like MCTs or fish oil is a really good um, pre-workout helps you get through your workouts really well gives you a lot more energy 
Um, I think the Bulletproof Coffee Company is doing a really great job with um, mixing together the coconut oil and the caffeine, and it prolongs uh, your energy levels. It's a really great way of getting a, a pre-workout in, in my opinion, uh, that's fairly cost-effective because uh, a lot of them out there are really, really expensive. And to add to that, I would say caffeine is another another great one. For any of you CrossFitters out there or functional fitness athletes, what I think is really, really cool about caffeine um, is there's an enzyme in your body. It's called your phosphorylase enzyme. And basically, you can think about it as a governor um, to when you're going to put the wall ball down for max reps of wall balls. So you get to a point where you're doing wall balls or you're doing thrusters or whatever it is, and your, your coach is like, I want you to do as many reps as you can until you fail. That's, that's your governor. That's your phosphorylase enzyme. And there's only two things that can make you extend that period of time. And one is caffeine, uh, and the other one is baking soda. So you might have heard of sprinters and such, uh, maybe trying a baking soda concoction to help them have a little bit more anaerobic capacity. What, the whole reason for that is to, uh, to buffer that enzyme so that you can go longer. So caffeine and baking soda will do that effect. They're the only two things that can do it. Um, but another thing to add to that, there's two things actually. Uh, caffeine, you have to have like not had it for a few weeks to have a really great effect like that. Uh, and the second one with baking soda is there's a very specific ratio that works for each person. And it's weight-based. And if you fuck it up, you will instantly shit your pants. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't mean that metaphorically like I actually have tried it a few times and I literally was running to the bathroom when I drank it and shit myself on the way to the bathroom I did not make it to the toilet and I had to wash those pants several times so we're playing with fire people yeah baking so- look it up honestly look it up uh, baking soda yeah look up Ryan Fisher shits pants on, <laughs> on baking soda <laughs> we should probably redo that I would love to try that again for anybody who's having shitting problems, you can't get any poop out. Go ahead and uh, use some baking soda. <laughs> or you put it in water, you mix it together. Um, everyone's like, damn, Ryan sounds smart right now. That's right. I, I do my studying. Uh, all right. If endurance is something that you're really wanting to get into, uh, there's two uh, supplements that show a lot of promise in that. You're looking at beta alanine. You've used beta alanine before, right? Yep. I think beta alanine is pretty good. It makes you feel all tingly inside. It feels good. It's weird. If you sneeze on it, it's the weirdest feeling in the whole entire world because your whole body just starts tingling. That sounds sexual. (laughs) Um, (laughs) And citrulate malate. Um, That's another another really good one. And those two are showing pretty good promise in the endurance world for that. Uh, If strength is a major concern and building some muscle, I think creatine is always going to be a plus. Um... Creatine monohydrate is great. There's a lot of new creatines right now that are doing really well. You are going to add a little bit of water weight, though, so don't freak out if you're not super lean on it. Um, but it is, it's proven. It's, I mean, you're just going to fucking get stronger if you're on creatine, for sure. Great for recovery as well. Yeah, great for recovery. And your body makes creatine. You're just adding a little bit more. Um, so depending on your goals on this one, uh, if you are a functional fitness athlete or you're a CrossFit athlete, uh, and you're trying to do really, really well in your workouts, you're probably not going to want this one. Uh, it's called arginine. The reason that I don't um, condone arginine for most CrossFit athletes is because it makes your muscles super, super pumped up. So let's say I'm going to uh, this would be like the worst workout ever to have arginine in your body. 100 double unders, 100 kettlebell swings, 100 pull-ups, 100 push-ups, right? That's a lot of pushing, a lot of pulling, and your muscles are going to get fucking jacked. And you're going to get to the point where you're going to be moving and you literally just cannot do another rep because you feel like your biceps are going to explode. So that's what arginine does. It increases the blood flow and it makes that super, super pump effect. Now, if you want to be a bodybuilder, that is a fucking badass supplement to have. And I would say 90% of the supplements out there, or sorry, the pre-workouts out there are going to have a shit ton of arginine in it. So the next time that you have a pre-workout that you really, really like, and it'll explode, um, C4, like a lot of these ones that you're like, oh yeah, this is my go-to, I guarantee you look on the label and there is thousands of milligrams of arginine in there. And that is why it gives you a giant pump. Mentally, it makes you feel really, really good. Um, and you feel fucking jacked in the gym. That's the whole reason you work out, right? Um, unless you're looking for performance, then cut that shit out. That's going to be my point. If you're like the guy that just goes to the gym, goes to 24 and just, just yeah. 
just bicep curls. Arjunina. I envy you. And, uh, <laughs> that sounds yeah, fucking like the, a great line. Put the in there. But if you're more like a CrossFit performance athlete and you're just trying to go for um, that new Fran time, that's just might not be your thing because your forearms might literally explode when you're doing Fran while taking pre-workout. And honestly, most of the benefits that you're getting from your pre-workout, you can also just get with caffeine. I mean, just drink a black coffee before you work out. It's a lot better for you. Fun fact for you, um, most pre-workouts out there are one chromosome away from being meth. So <laughs> that's, that's a true fact. Look it up. If you're writing your college paper right now and you're listening to this podcast and you're just copy and pasting everything we say, you can put that in there. I promise you. <laughs> if your teacher looks it up, you're good to go. <clears throat> I love it. I, I took some Adderall in college. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it has absolutely no... It has nothing, it has nothing to do with any of this. I mean, we are, we are the supplements. I mean, we're talking about meth, so I figured... <laughs> I wanna, it's about as close as I've got to it. Um, actually, I did... Well, my mom's not going to be proud of this, but I did co- cocaine a couple times in college. Yeah. That was that was fun. I'm just, I'll just, I'll just, I mean, cocaine is your next option, so you can do pre-workout, <laughs> you can do coffee, or if you do a couple lines of coke before the workout... <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna feel great. In college, one time I actually snorted a line of Super Pump 250. <laughs> <laughs> me, me and my friends, we went to work. We like oh, partied shit. all night. Woke up. Uh, we drank some pre workout. He's like, "Let's snort a line of pre workout." I was like, "Fuck yeah!" We went to the gym. Oh, it was, I thought my beat, my heart was gonna beat out of my chest, <laughs> and I thought I was gonna die. I thought Ryan's last moments on Earth was gonna be on the lap on the lap pull down. <laughs> <laughs> 10 reps in <laughs> just getting fucking jacked oh man college days for real another great supplement out there that a lot of people don't realize um is a great supplement they just they just immediately um pair it up with red bull is taurine so what's great about taurine is after a workout it will help you feel less lethargic uh, it'll help your brain be a little bit more on its toes, and it'll also help you recover a little bit mentally just from physical stress. Um, taurine is great for that stuff, and taurine can also actually combat a high arginine uh, supplementation. So if you have a lot of arginine in your body, you take some taurine, it'll actually lower that pump down. So there's a, another good one for you. Um I think that goes over all of the supplements I like to talk about and all the food. I got a couple to add. Go for it. Supplements. And I've mentioned this before on another podcast that we did, but vitamin D. Oh yeah. Vitamin D is definitely a big one. I totally Um, fucked up on that. That's a good one. Especially like the, for people who are inside a lot, inside a lot, people like working in offices and stuff like that. Yeah, That's a good one. Um, you don't really get that direct sun exposure because your body produces vitamin D naturally. If you do get direct sun exposure, but if you don't, um, it's great for your immune system and just general overall mood. And then uh, vitamin B12 is literally like this superhero of vitamins. Like it has so many great benefits. I can't even list all of them. So just go ahead and look it up. But it's good for um, your heart, immune system, general overall mood. It's yeah, going to improve awesome. your sleep. Like it has your hair, your nails. You're going to look great. You're going to feel great. Um, if I had to take one supplement forever, it would be B12 for sure. Funny B12 story real quick, because uh, I, th- I know a lot of people are on here for just personality reasons. You guys like to hear me talk shit and hear me say dumb shit. <laughs> when I used to be on the Olympic bobsled team, a couple friends and I bought a massive bottle of horse B12 from a equine website. Horse B12? Yeah, and we would inject ourselves before competitions. Oh my god. <laughs> it, it was the greatest thing ever. Like We would take these fucking... Pretty good sized needles and uh-huh. fucking take a shit ton of B12 and inject it and we'd be like, woo! Like, if we fucking go into our competitions, it was no awesome. No way. Yeah. So what would it do? you just like... It was only like $15 because it's probably not very clean or it's probably not uh-huh. good for, for humans, but it, it gives you a good little energy boost. There's a lot of people out there, a lot of doctors uh, who were doing like at these HCG clinics yeah. and they're doing B12 injections as well. It gives people energy. Uh-huh. Um... Yeah, I heard it's good for hangovers, too. It's good for hangovers, and it's also yeah. good just for um, for fat loss. Like, if you don't have a lot of B12 in your body, it's, it's good for fat loss. Especially vegetarians out there and vegans out there. You don't get yeah. enough B12 in your, in your meat. You got to have a B12 injection. I mean, uh, they make you do pills, subliminal, but the injection's way, way better. And, uh, and yeah, I used to take that out of a horse needle, so that was good. 
<laughs> I should actually start doing that again. It was fun. I love how we started this podcast saying that this is going to be a podcast about just like the general nutrition knowledge. <laughs> and now we're injecting B12 with horse meals. <laughs> Well, that's why Ryan Fisher is Ryan Fisher. That's that true. Did some Never stuff. know where the fight's gonna go. <clears throat> um, <laughs> here's a here's a few things that I think is very very important as far as someone who's trying to get into a healthy lifestyle, um, and you're beyond all that, and you have a really fucking good job, like you you're a real estate agent, or you got to go out to dinner a lot, or you have a girlfriend, she definitely wants to go out to dinner, um, and you you just gotta please some people, right? So you, we have to go out sometimes to be normal. Um, and just have a regular regular life. So when you go out to eat, there's a few things to think about. Um, I have my checklist here, but I, I literally live and breathe by this, so I don't know if I'm even going to look at it. But uh, number one thing when going out to eat is wherever you eat, you want to make sure that the meat that is being cooked is going to be on a real grill that has lines. Does that make sense? Like a, like a, yeah. like a, like a barbecue-style grill. Like If it's a flat grill... Like, when I say flat grill, I think the first thing you think about is McDonald's. McDonald's. You see the flat stainless steel grill, yep. and flat stainless steel grills, 100% of the time, I've never seen it any other time, they're always covered in vegetable oil. So vegetable or cheap oils usually go on those flat grills because they need a lot of oil to keep it greased up and to keep meat from sticking on it. A regular grill, because of the air that gets through, they, there's no uh, oils usually on there, and you're getting a much better uh, quality meal. When you have those, when you have those grills, um, so that would like I literally, you can ask like any girlfriend I've ever had. I literally walk in restaurants and I go straight to the kitchen. I'll let them yell at me too. I don't even fucking care. I look straight in the back like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm looking at the grill. I want to see what you guys cook your meat on uh. straight up, and I'll, and and I'll do that a lot. Um, I've actually gotten to the point here, and Yaya knows about this place. It's called Ark. Uh, it's the greatest burger place in the entire world, uh, and the, and just food in general. They will serve bacon. As an appetizer. And that bacon is like... It looks like a steak. A quarter of an inch thick. Like, it looks like a steak. It's just two pieces of bacon, oh, and that's that. your appetizer. And that's going to be my last meal if I ever have to pick a last meal. ARC. A-R-C. It's in Orange County. It is fucking out of control. The burger is made of short rib, bacon, oh, yeah. and ground beef. Talk slower. They cook it <laughs> in duck fat on a cast iron pan and put it in a brick oven. It's out of control. If you're ever in the area... <laughs> Please hit me up, and we will go together, <laughs> and you will buy my burger, and I'll eat it in front of you. No, I'm kidding. But I'll, I'll go with you. I swear to God. Um, all right. I swear to God. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> Another good thing about when you're going out to eat, and you're with friends, uh, it, the peer pressure to eat shitty food like french fries or bread or things on the table that are not really uh, in the ballpark of what you're trying to really get after, the best thing you can do is look that person in the eye and fucking lie to them. And you tell them that you either have celiac disease, you have a gluten intolerance, or you have some sort of fucking weird hypothyroid because you say something like that and they immediately shut the fuck out. Yep. If you just say, I'm trying to eat better because I want to get in better shape, you have instantly created a conversation that will last the rest of the dinner. Yep. They'll ask you, oh, what's healthy? Is this healthy? Am I? Am I? Is is this what? I, is why I'm what I'm getting healthy? Or oh, why do you want to get in shape? Or they're gonna fucking come up with some dumb shit. It's sure. gonna really annoy you. It's gonna make you feel uncomfortable. You're never gonna want to go out to eat again. This sounds like my last night. Um, <laughs> it just it just brings up like so much dumb stuff. So I want you to like really just just make something up. Hey man, I'm gluten intolerant. I can't have any gluten, or I fucking swell up my throat. and I'm gonna fucking die. All right, it's a really basic, basic, easy way to get out of it. And it's it. I, I love it. I tell everyone I'm, I have celiac disease. It's great. Um, if you tell the chef also that you have uh, gluten intolerance, usually what they'll do is they'll cook your food on a separate pan. So if it was cooked with vegetable oil or a bunch of like breaded breaded things, and then you order a steak or something, they'll cook your steak on a separate pan, and you don't even have to worry about it. They by law they have to do that if you have a gluten intolerance. Isn't that awesome? Um. Beware of added sugar on almost everything. So the ketchup at the table is probably covered in sugar. Yep. Um, a lot of the sauces that you're getting on yep. your meat, probably covered in sugar. Uh, if you're like, damn, that sauce is so good, or that barbecue sauce is so good, definitely covered in sugar. <laughs> barbecue sauce, main ingredient is brown sugar. I mean, you and I even have places here, like that chicken place that we go to, and we're just like, dude, there's 
There's just no way. Sweet potatoes are too good. It's something's every, wrong. Something's, something's wrong. Like, something's wrong. Yeah. If it fucking seems too good to be true, it probably is. Um, just in general, like if if uh, if you can, I would just ask the server before you even really get there. Not before you get there, but like if if you have a second, just kind of ask them instead of bringing bread out. Can you guys bring out like I don't know, like a shrimp cocktail or something mm-hmm. like that? Like just don't even let the bread hit the table, or don't even let like any of those things that they bring to the table wherever you're at. I mean, if you're at like Red Lobster and they have those biscuits, oh my god, have you ever had those? Yeah, oh my god, when I was a child, <laughs> I would fuck those up. Um, I used to or or Olive Garden, they had these like the breadsticks, a little breadsticks. Yeah. Oh my god, I when I was a kid. I would go there and just get an appetizer for like 10 bucks. That's like really all I had. My friend and I, we would just eat breadsticks the whole time. Yep. Fucking crazy. But uh, where, wherever you're at, uh, just try not to get that stuff on the table. Because it, it, it's just like uh, when you have it in your house. Like if I have all this fucked up shit in my house, no matter how much willpower I have, eventually at some point I'm not going to have any food in the house. So you should point that out. Like it's going down. That's the best point that you've ever made. The easiest way to eat healthy is to just not buy shitty food. Yeah. Don't put it in your house. Yeah. Because if you're... I don't care who you are. If you're at home at night and you're craving something, but it's not in your house, you're not going to leave and go to the store and buy yeah, it. Chances are you're not. Chances are you're too tired and you're too lazy and you're just going to eat whatever is here. And if there's no shitty food here, then you figure it out and you just eat something that's not shitty for you. That's honestly the best yeah. thing I've ever heard from you. We're in my living room right now. And literally, if fucking the world ended right now and I, we could not go outside, the absolute worst thing you can eat in my entire house right now is a Power Crunch bar. Which is pretty fucking badass. <laughs> and it's red velvet flavor. It's in my freezer right now. It's pretty good. Um, but yeah, I've, I've definitely had multiple nights where I've run out of food in my house. And I will literally eat a fucking cockroach off the floor if it came in front of me. Like, I'm so hungry. I don't know what to do. And, like, I literally just, like, open my cabinet. And I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to have a scoop of coconut oil. Who the fuck does that? Who does that? Like, no one does that. But, like, that's literally what it comes down to. It's because people have options, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, if you, if you had all these options, and for those of you who have a lot of, like, who, those of you out there who have kids, I mean, I would, you know, if, if, if getting healthy is important to you, it's got to be healthy for everybody. It's got to be a family change. You have to be like, you know what, like, every Friday we're going to go as a family, we're going to go to In-N-Out and fucking have this grand old time, but the rest of the week... We're all going to be eating healthy. It's just like something that I want, I want to do as a family. It's going to make you guys better athletes as children. It's going to make, you know, you know, you and your wife maybe in better shape uh, or for the summer coming up or whatever it is. But it's got to be something that is agreed upon by everybody. Um, have you guys have ever had any friends where, you know, you, you get this girlfriend who just has a lot of bad habits and all of a sudden your friend just doesn't like to work out anymore or he yep. is a fucking vegetarian now yep. or like... He just takes over whatever she does. Totally. And I mean, and I'm not hating on that, but what you surround yourself by is eventually going to be what you are. So if you have all this bad shit in your fridge, it's, you know, it's eventually going to get eaten. And to go off of that, I just want to make one point too, since this is like a nutrition podcast. Nutrition, like eating well, doesn't have to suck. Absolutely we, not. You, we, I'm sure Fish went through the same stage as me too. I feel like every guy at least has gone through this. Like if you're kind of into fitness and stuff. We all go through that phase where all we eat is chicken and brown rice and broccoli. And it's like every meal and it's all the time. And at times you can't even look at it anymore. Like it's just so ridiculously plain and you're trying to like shove it down your throat with a shit ton of water. I literally had a roommate in college who was trying to gain weight because he got an offer to play at Oklahoma. And they wanted him to gain like 20 pounds. And... He got so sick and tired of eating the same shit that I got home to him being in the kitchen and he just had a plate full of chicken, potatoes, rice, broccoli and he put everything into the blender and started (laughs) drinking it because he's like, dude, I literally physically can't chew anymore. Like, I just need to get this down my throat. That's not what nutritioning should feel like. Yeah. And for most of us, if you're a professional athlete and you're Tom Brady, um, and if Tom Brady's listening to this podcast, that'd be fucking sick. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're a professional athlete, that's it's different. It's your life and it's your career, and you most likely have people helping you out. You you have people making your food. You have people making your meal preps for you, um, calculating exactly what to eat, when to eat, and all that's done for you. If you're a regular average Joe out there just trying to live healthy and work out and be able to play with your kids, 
nutritioning doesn't have to suck. If you're if you want a donut, go ahead and eat a donut. If you are out with your friends and <clears throat> you're celebrating because you got a big promotion at work, go ahead and order the burger with fries. Like it doesn't have to suck. It doesn't have to cut into your lifestyle. But you can make some very easy adjustments and a lot of the things that we just mentioned on this podcast that will just make you so much more efficient and a lot more healthy when it comes to nutritioning. Just don't think that it has to be like that every single time because then you're just stressing yourself out and stress raises cortisol levels and stress can cause insulin spikes. So then you just, everything is fucked again, right? And sleep. And sleep. Don't try and change everything at once. Change the little things. Change the things that are easy for you. And if you're fucking craving a donut, go eat that fucking donut, dude. It's not... It's not one good meal. It's not going to break you just like, or sorry, one bad meal. It's not going to break you just like one good meal. Isn't going to just give you abs the next day. That's a good point. I think we just crushed that. I feel really good about it. I I hope everybody out there feels really good about it. Especially Tom Brady. (laughs) (laughs) I just got off getting you guys off. As always. As always. And that will wrap it up. You guys, I hope you had as much fun listening to that as we had recording that for you we truly had a blast and like i said this episode had such a big impact on everything i mean it's a big reason why we are on the shrug collective and why we are with the podcast where we are now so if you guys enjoyed it make sure you guys leave us a review you guys subscribe all the love that we can get we're more than happy to take it on top of that if you guys do have any more questions anything that we didn't answer during that episode feel free to hit us up Either per email, it's going to be Yaya or Ryan at CrossFitTalk.com or just simply send us a DM on Instagram. That's going to be Yaya at, or sorry, at Yaya's View. It's a long day, guys. All right, so Instagram at Yaya's View, Fish is at Ryan Fish. And don't forget about the giveaway that we got going on right now with the Chalk Online Programming. Head over to CrossFitTalk.com, sign up for your first month and you automatically get entered into the raffle to win that free ski erg. So good luck, have fun, tell your friends. I'm Yaya, this is Real Chalk.